So it's time now to do a polynomial fit method to our differential method. So remember, once again, sorry to give you this introduction, probably you're bored if you've seen the last two videos, but if you just stumble upon, it will be nice that you know that the differential method is used for calculating the order of reaction of a reaction, of course. And let me tell you, we've seen the graph graphical method and we've seen, we've seen a numerical method and I like this polynomial fit one because it's uh, the it actually makes sense so what we're going to do is to fit a polynomial to the curve so probably you, you've done this before uh, with data we have CA and we have time we have a lot of uh, let's say point data here and we're going to graph it in software probably Excel, it's normally done in Excel, even though you can do it by hand, it's a little bit longer and takes time, but you will be able to form a polynomial here, here, depending on how much, how many points you want to model and how many, how, how exact you want to model. Uh, then, after having this, so you need the value, let's see, CA, maybe model, I don't know, maybe 1 plus 2 times T plus 1 half of T to the square, and you go on and on, whatever uh, values you want to get. Now we differentiate that, so this is 0, and this is 2, and this is 1, let's say t, and this is 9, t to the square, that's the, the, the differential of that. And once we got this, we're going to value or plot concentration of A versus that, because we need this in order to in order to get the differential method going. So you want to work that, the differential method, you need to fit and to get those data. So before you are asking what's a polynomial fit, probably you've done this on Excel, you got this, your y-axis, your x-axis, and then you got all these point values, you just put them here. And the thing here is very nice because it's a curve, many times you will have experimental data as this, and well, having a curve like this, mm, not nice. And sorry, let me erase that. Yeah. As you can see, probably you have fit, let's say, only one uh, variable or a straight line. Of course, this is not a straight line. So trying to fit a straight line will give you terrible results. And I do not recommend it if you see it's a curve. So probably going to the second power will be very nice. But you know, second power are generally curves like this. And this is more like the half of that, so probably you want to increase to the third power. And yes, now with the third power you get a better fit. Actually, if you were to calculate all these differences and make them to the square and averaging, it will give you an R value of, I don't know, maybe something about 98%, which will be very nice. So my option will be essentially uh, get the, f the best one here and try not to increase the order that much. So probably having, if you were having this R, I don't know, 90%, maybe that one is okay, maybe it's low, that depends on the application. But going to 98, I will say definitely take this one. And maybe you want to do another one, but uh, that's not that nice because probably you're going to have something crazy. We're going to talk about that. And you will see that maybe the R, yes, will be 99.9, .9, but when you see it in the graph, it will be like, what the hell are you doing? You have one point here, one point here, one point here. It will be like, I don't know, maybe doing something like this. And you say, yeah, perfect, you have this very nice, and this very nice, and this very nice, and this very nice, but you have a huge difference here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. So, just stick with the third, per, uh, third power, will be okay. And when I see the values, so remember, this a0, a1, a2, and a n to the, well, the n, I'm talking about these numbers here. These numbers are the constants I need. Of course, also use the negative values. And for example, the cubic will give you this value here, which will be a0, a1, a2, and a3. Now, that's one thing that's essentially that one here. But we need the derivative or the we need to differentiate that, so just remember your differentiation rule, constant go to zero, this stays to the t to the zero, t 
this is will be multiplied by 2 and you get t and this will be multiplied by 3 times t to the square so uh, hopefully you now will remember how to differentiate it how to derive it and yeah you're done now it's time to use the data and get those derivative values so once again input x axis data which is the natural logarithm of concentration to your new model so you will have something like this and your model will be, I don't know, a0 plus a1t and a2t squared. And you need to, of course, you know a0 is, I don't know, a3 and a1 is minus 2 and a2 will be minus 0 0.5. So input this in t, natural logarithm, and you will find it here. So yeah, that's a axis, x axis value. And what else? Input y data, which is the derivative here. And you final okay here. Oh, actually, I'm jumping. This is what I explain you. You can do it either by hand or by software. Go directly to this, differentiate, and get the values of that derivative. Once again, probably if it's if you've seen the last three videos, you know that we must finish with this table. The important of this polynomial fit is that it only gives you this part right here. So this part right here is not the differential method. This is the start of the differential method. So we use the polynomial fit method to get these values. And now we are able to continue with the differential method. So be sure to include many as many points as possible. So yeah, here these guys, guys. As I told you before, maybe you get a bad. If you are adding or getting high orders, you will get this. But also, if you were to use only straight line, you will lose, you will lose, uh, or you will not be able to capture all data. But not because of that, you're going to give a super high value of, I don't know, maybe 5 or 6. I think that's too much. So something around 3, 4, even 2 might be okay. And, yeah, so I told you before, you got the polynomial fit, perfect. Now let's continue with the differential method, which is essentially the slope we got this and these values with the polynomial fit and this value here so we can use these equations and get the slope and remember that the slope is the order alpha so we got something like this and not only that we will be also able to calculate k but go first for alpha because you will need it here and that's essentially the polynomial fit it's kind of easy and I will be showing you an example in the next slides or maybe in the web page on the three methods. So you can use the three methods because we are depending on C and T. We get the three methods and you will be having the different or you might compare them. Which one do you like the most? Which one is faster? Which one is easier? And which one is more precise? So I think we're done. Yes, we're going to find these values in the next video. Uh, and we're going to conclude with the differential method. So congratulations, guys. You're almost done. What's up, guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.